Hey, this is Mark. I just wanted to uh, come on here. It has been a while. Um, biggest reason, if you've been following, my wife is is hiking the Appalachia Trail. Appalachian Trail, she says Appalachia. Uh, actually has gone, I think she's almost at 600 miles. It's just amazing what she's doing. So what I've done is um, I'm her support. Uh, I really am. I, I'm I'm drive right now i live in near knoxville tennessee so everywhere i've been driving like you know in between two three hours to me when i go uh, every three days four days uh this time it's going to be a seven day jaunt in between but the drive's a little longer it's a three hour drive uh, and what i do is i i'm just their supplier she's hiking with uh, our dog mako a standard poodle uh they're having a ton of fun so i bring dog food and supplies for her and she's hiking with a group of people uh there's actually counting her there's five so that she's hiking with four people a husband and wife and a couple of their friends so i support them all i bring supplies every week but what it's done is actually kind of thrown me off a little bit um so I just thought I'm going to have to start coming back on and, and doing some lives in the group to help you out. But um, anyway, it, it, it's that's what we're doing. Yeah, to tell you the truth, I want to be just all present for Nancy. It's what she's doing is just an amazing thing, and this is her journey. Um, and I know I, I'm I'm going to learn a ton. One as I'm talking to a lot of hikers, and it's just, their stories are just amazing. You know what I'm seeing are. Uh, Retired people because of the time. It's a six month commitment. It's 2,100 miles. Uh, young people, at college, trying to get this done in between college seasons or they just finished college. Uh, and some military people. And their stories are just amazing. So I'm coaching every day. And part of coaching is being present and asking questions. And um, it's been pretty cool. I, I'm learning a ton from them. I just had the neatest thing. And I'm going to talk about imposter syndrome today, but I just had the neatest thing. I sat down. Uh, and I could have done a Facebook Live normal, but I thought, you know, I'm going to try a Zoom and get more comfortable with it. But uh, I looked out, and, and I, eagles, to me, are just a, a, a sign. And I looked out, and probably 100 yards away from me, with e an eagle was soaring, fishing, and also being chased by crows. <laughs> it was brief. I heard the noise first. And if you've ever... I know you've seen eagles, but that flash of white just catches their attention. I haven't seen one for a while. So this, to me, was a gift. Anyway, so I, I love those things. So today I want to talk about imposter syndrome. And the reason I'm talking about it is because, one, I, I get emails from other coaches. I get emails from marketers. And I read one about imposter syndrome. And uh, it was actually pretty cool. It, it, it was... Uh, and I've, I've battled with it. You know, the imposter syndrome is your belief, right? You're believing something that's not true. And mine, a lot of it was, I didn't think I was good enough when I started this business. I didn't think I was smart enough. You know, I've been in business and I've, I've been successful, but never hit the home run. If that makes sense. It's a, um, I had a retail store. We had to close it. I made some bad decision, but in all reality, it was because the big box stores came in and we just couldn't keep up. Um, I, I bought a cleaning business and I was told by the person I bought for and we kept it a year and, and sold it. Did, we did really well and sold it back to somebody and she got mad at us because she said I never stayed with anything. But again, in, in all reality, it was, I, we were dealing with chemicals every day and fires and water damage and it just wasn't something we wanted to do. Um, I tried financial industry and uh, worked on commission only. And if I would have stayed, I probably wouldn't be married. <laughs> That's not imposter syndrome. That was a, my wife reminded me why we had young kids and they were six and four and, and I went for it. I, I was gone all the time um, and missed a ton. I, I always felt bad about that. So when I say imposter syndrome, it's all those things that are back in your past, back, 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 keep coming back at you. And they just are, um, it's not worth it. Not worth it to, to think about them, to uh, get them back there. They're in the past. 
So I want to talk to you about imposter syndrome. And I, and I, and, and I study NLP. Um, I would say what it stands for, but I'll just tumble. <laughs> Natural linguistic. Anyway, what it is is dealing mindset with your mind. Uh, and I was actually helped by a really good friend of mine, Steve Krivda. Um, I hired him as a coach. And he, I was in a uh, network marketing business. And I, I wasn't, I was okay in network marketing business, but it wasn't my really cup of tea. Um, so anyway, I, I hired him to, to help me in business. And we were talking one day and, and, and he's, good questions, good questions, good coaches ask questions. You know, they keep digging, you know, and he started asking me questions about what was going on and, you know, what's going on in my business. And I don't even know what I said to him, but I said, you know, I, I've just can't just nail it. You know, I, I just can't be whatever. And so he, he did uh, NLP training with me and, and I'm going to do it with you, but he did something a little different. What he did was, you know, I talked to him about it. I had a, um, an acquaintance and a sibling, you know, we were in a very teasing family and very sarcastic family. And, uh, I used to be told I wasn't good enough. I would never amount to anything, not amount to anything, but that's what I took from it. That was what my brain took from it. So he actually had me lay down on my bed and get really quiet. And he wanted me to think back of a time, close my eyes, think back of a time when I was really successful, when I was Superman successful, when I just felt like this was it, nothing would ever stop me. And I did, you know, I laid down there and he, he said, okay, now what I want you to do, think about it again. And he said, I want you to raise your hands in a power. Second. And this is actually what we did. And he said, as you do that, I want you to squeeze it. It had to be my left hand. I'm right-handed. It had to be my left hand. I don't, I don't know why that works, but that's a, so I and squeeze my middle finger and my thumb together and think of that moment and the, how good it felt and squeeze the power I felt not. And I did it. And he had me do it a couple of times. We stood up and I did it. I did my power stand. Was, yeah. Um, and what I still use it. I think that was, holy cow, 2013, I bet that he did that. I, I believe I can't know. Yeah. 2013. I still do it because there's times, that, you know, mentally I'm just not there. It's like I'm not uh, thinking right. So it's, I just, I get back my power stance. But I was reading an NLP book in, in the, and it was the same thought process. But it was a little easier. And I just did this with my wife because, you know, hiking the Appalachian Trail, that's, oh my gosh. Um, the hikes they take and the, to get up to the peaks, uh, it's a hike. And there's days that she's tired and there's been a couple times that it's like, she's kind of reached out and said, you know, I don't know. You know, our dog is not suffering, but it's hard on him too. And she says, I don't know if I should be doing this. And uh, so I had her do something when I was reading this, this was instead of the forefinger of this, it was to tap the middle knuckle. Again, opposite hand of where we are, the second knuckle. First, think of a positive thought where you're the strongest, where you feel the best, and tap it. And keep going through that and tap it. So she does that. And I remind her, I said, well, you hit your middle knuckle. And she goes, no. And she says, okay, I got it. I'm done. I'm going to finish my hike. 2,100 miles. And she's 600. So they're, they're a little bit more than fourth of the way down. But if you're battling imposter syndrome or those thoughts, here's what I want you to do. The same thing, same thing, same, 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 same thing is think of a time when you felt like you were the most po powerful, when things felt really good for you, when you were in your best space ever. And think of that. Close your eyes and tap that middle knuckle. Don't squeeze, just tap it happen and anchor what it does is anchor that thought in your head 
See, I'm changing. I tap that and I see my power. So when things are going bad, all you got to do is tap. Don't close your eyes. Just tap the knuckle. Bring that thought back. So there you go. You got it. I'm going to be live. I'm going to come on here live once a week. I have the crazy part is I never know when they call me. I mean, last week, all of a sudden, the weather turned and they called me. I was supposed to go on a Saturday. They called me. Can you come Friday morning? And I was gone. I, I had two coaching calls set up, but it, it's like uh, I'm all present for them. This is my wife's stream. I'm going to help support her. So she has a YouTube page. Search YouTube um, Nancy and Mako or Nancy and Mako hiking, and you'll find it. Subscribe to it. She does a great job on her videos. She's thinking amazing. Uh, she's actually a musician. Uh, so, of course, that's where it comes. She's very comfortable speaking and laughing and comfortable about herself. But there you have it, middle knuckle. Y'all take care. I'm going to see if I can end this. You. We'll see you later. Y'all take care. Bye.